Yo, 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 welcome back to the Nasty Nate channel. We are out here working on the Yukon XL or the 2500 Suburban, whatever you want to call this thing. I've got tons of updates for you guys this week. We just posted the fuel system video. Make sure you check that out down below or I'll do one of those card things up here or whatever. Tons of updates on this thing. We've done the body lift and we did the rear axle. I really want to explain the body lift in this video, so I've got it drawn out on my famous whiteboard that I did the last video with on the fuel system. So I think that's really going to help kind of visualize what we're doing. Got my awesome artistic skills right here with the Suburban. Anyway, we're going to jump into that in just a minute. I wanted to show the rear axle first. I picked up a Duramax rear axle, which is the 11 and a half from any Duramax. This is from an 01 to 2010. Uh, I'm not sure what the newer ones, how they are different, but I wanted to make sure this was from an 01 to a 2010 just so it bolted right in with no problems. We hooked up the factory brake cable or e-brake cable, I'm sorry, and obviously the brake lines. And I did have to get new U-bolts because the Duramax axle uh, leaf spring pad here is taller, so you cannot use the Suburban U-bolts that it comes with. Uh, you should probably replace the U-bolts anyway because they are stretch bolts, and if you're ever taking those apart, you should replace them. So I didn't want to make a full video on this because it's really straightforward. All you do is bolt it in and hook up the brake lines like anybody knows how to do that. I don't want to make a how-to video on putting an axle in because it's just easy. If you need to do that, there's plenty of videos out there. Check out what we're about to do. We are lifting the body of the Suburban to get the Duramax under this thing just right. This thing's like leaning super bad. I got half of it jacked up. Anyway, I am super surprised. Earlier today, I didn't want to record this because I'm like, dude, something bad is going to happen. I'm going to get it all on video and I'm just going to get so angry and then not want to film anything later so we got the body mounts going on the suburban so very hard to see under here because it's dark i need to invest in some better lighting anyway the body mount in the front on the driver's side is out so right now we are putting the lift spacers in you have to lift the front of the suburban two inches so this is the two inch spacer right here basically you have to do the two inch spacer for core support reasons and for the trans tunnel so what a lot of people do is they run stepped spacers so basically the rear is going to be right here some people do the full two inch body lift on the whole thing myself um i'm not a fan of body lifts at all but this is necessary if you're doing a Duramax swap on a Suburban. Huge shout out to E. Sanders. Oh, look at my baby Daisy. Anyway, huge shout out to E. Sanders 11624. Dude, your Instagram name is too long. 11624, what does that stand for? Anyway, he's got this LBZ cat eye front end swapped Suburban absolute unit the the dude is one of the coolest dudes i've met on social media he lives super far away but we will link up sometime in the future i owe you big time brother dinner beers all on me even more than that i can't thank this guy enough he has been a huge help just got off the phone with him and he explained exactly what he did on his and how to jack it up basically he has his lift pump in a different spot than I do. So I chose to get the longest two by eight I could under this thing. It basically runs the whole length of the rocker and it's actually on the running board and the running board is tied into the rockers and then there's a bracket that goes up into the body further, not just on the rocker. So then I stacked up a bunch of wood and uh, kind of got creative. I know everybody does this kind of stuff nobody films it so here i am filming it shout out to my girl on instagram for telling me to film this so i ran in to get the gopro anyway you know who you are we are filming this right here 
Everybody gets scared when they see pictures like this, but I know everybody does it, so shut your mouth. Or throw down in the comments what you think of this, because I love some hate comments. They crack me up. Anyway, we are slapping the spacers on. The one and a half inch spacer goes like this in the front body mount, which is right here under the front door. And then we'll basically work our way back and then we'll do the other side. I'm not gonna film a ton of this because it's not very exciting. Now you have to do it two inches in the front to work with the um, Duramax core support radiator, all that stuff. So here's what you do. I accidentally bought three inch spacers so not a big deal i was gonna cut them down anyway so here we go with the measurements i'm gonna show you the back one you literally don't use a spacer front one you cut at 0.32 inches next one you cut at 0.5 next one you cut at one inch next one you cut at 1.5 and then two inches if you buy two inch spacers like this like i should have you don't even need to cut the front one so then you are going to need longer bolts well the back bolt, obviously, you just use the factory one. Hasn't changed. Then you walk through here. I bought mine from bellmetric.com. Not a bad price for all of them. 45 bucks, 50, 50 bucks with shipping. It's kind of a lot for 10 bolts, but I just wanted to get it over with and not have to deal with it. But you buy, basically, these are metric, and you buy them as long as your spacer is longer than your factory bolt if that makes sense however you explain that so i bought two at 130 millimeters to 140 to 150 160 then 170 which will be in the front so that's 10 bolts and there's 12 mounts rear ones just use the factory bolt next thing you guys have been looking at on this bench right here is the transfer case Transfer case we pulled off of the motor and trans and the whole ordeal over here the other day. We did lose a little bit of trans fluid, but I think I'm gonna put the swap in like this and then put the transfer case in later. I don't wanna have problems with this whole thing being way too long and not being able to get it in. So we are set up to put the motor and trans in as soon as possible, probably tomorrow. So you'll see the tran or you'll see the motor going in next week-ish. So, motor's gonna go in. The transfer case I pulled off because this truck was rear-ended and the, the rear axle was pushed forward and actually bent. So, the rear axle I had from the donor truck, literally the axle tube was bent forward. That's why I bought a separate axle. You guys saw that video. If not, make sure you check it out because we ruined my bed on the single cab with the new axle. But since it was wrecked in the back, the drive shaft was pushed into this, and this is no longer centered in the back of this transfer case. And if you pull this little window thing off, you can see like a little spring clip thing in there that is not in the place that it's supposed to be. So basically, this needs to be rebuilt. So, I needed to take this off anyway. Haven't decided if I wanna do that on my workbench yet or if I wanna pay someone to do it. Probably gonna go that route because I don't wanna mess it up. I know it's not that bad, but I've never done something like that before. It would probably be cool to see. So if I buy another transfer case, maybe we'll do that one for a different truck. I don't know. I needed to get the spacers in first before I put the motor in. So now it's literally ready to go. I'm gonna put the motor in and then I'll worry about the transfer case later once I get that done, but I can start wiring everything up and then we can do the interior stuff like the cluster, uh, the shifter, and the 4x4 switch, all that good stuff. So stay tuned right here to the Nasty Nate channel. We are getting in to this Suburban as quick as we can. It's been a long drawn out process only because of just literally ordering parts, just random stuff in it. And then I got all kinds of life stuff going in the background. So it's like, man, I want to work on the Suburban today, but I can't get dirty. So I don't want to do that. And then it's like tomorrow, the next day I can't work on it, whatever. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the motor mounts. I had to buy new motor mounts because the rubber was bad on the donor truck. So I bought them from Rock Auto. Yes, these are the good cheapos. 
So the weird thing about the motor mounts is you need the Duramax motor mounts and the Duramax motor mounts and the Duramax motor mount brackets, which come on the Duramax frame to the motor mount. The brackets that are on the Suburban are a different size and shape, so you need the brackets that go in between the frame and the motor mount from the Duramax. So that's what these are. These are from the Suburban and the 6 liter. We don't need these. I can basically just throw them away. You can see we had fun getting those bull. Anyway, the motor mounts are ready to go. I need to slap those on when it's jacked up with the engine hoists here. And we'll put that in in the very next video. So stay tuned right here to the Nasty Night channel. We're getting into the Suburban and I can't wait. I'm getting super excited. I wanna hear this thing fire. So make sure you stay tuned. It's gonna be soon.